So we want to welcome you to the 24th annual Miami Jewish Film Festival. It is one of the world's largest and oldest Jewish cultural arts events. And we want to thank all of our members and sponsors, community partners, volunteers, all of you film lovers, and especially our presenting sponsors, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education, CAGE, and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for their continued support throughout all of these years. My name is Rabbi Amy Morrison. I am the rabbi at Temple Israel of Greater Miami. I am so excited to be here today because I am moderating and get to meet these two fabulously incredible women. I am here with the writer, director, Sherelle Peleg, and the producer, Christine Gunther, of an amazing film that you all just got to watch called Kiss Me Kosher. And I just want to thank all of you for being a part of this film that is premiering this year at the festival. And I want to thank you women for joining us today. So we are in three different time zones and uh, I hope that I can send a little bit of sun your way from Miami. We are so excited to have you guys here. Um, and on a very personal note, it was a pleasure to watch your film. I watched it back to back twice because I just, I uh, loved the characters and I loved the role that Israel took, not only as a character, I truly believe, similar to Sex in the City, where New York took on a role. Um, the graffiti in the back was meaningful. The music in the foreground was meaningful. Everything was clearly put into this um, film with, in with intention. And so that's where I want to start with you guys. When you were um, thinking about the screenplay and putting it onto the camera for us to identify with, what was the biggest challenge of translating the literal word to the picture and to the sound? Mm, I think the biggest challenge was getting an Israeli crew to um, to function. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> How so? Uh, no, it was a very international team. Um, which was beautiful to, to see how it actually uh, can work out and flourish. Um, I think the biggest challenge was to create something because the story itself is nothing new. We all know it. We've all experienced it in a way uh, in our private lives if we are connected to, to this kind of story. Um, and we've seen it done before. So the biggest challenge for me was to try and put it, to, to have a different take on things that we've seen more than once and things that I felt personally that are presented in a way that are not relatable to me, even though they're very much a part of my personal life. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I think the biggest challenge was to take something and make it relatable and not present it as a cliche. It was not a cliche, so success on that front. Um, from an English, uh, an American father, or English-speaking father, and um, you know, I thought that that <clears throat> the role of having this German subtext throughout this, uh, you know, I think as a Jewish woman or as a Jewish American, you know, and, and I'd love you guys to speak about this: the role of the Shoah, of the Holocaust in our history, but also in our humor you know, a darkness that is very much present for so many of us. How do you bring that to the screen and translate it honestly for Jewish and non-Jewish audiences who may not understand how this additional character of the Holocaust or of Holocaust humor can be played out in a way in which you really are giving us permission to laugh? That was the biggest challenge because we felt that it's definitely something that we don't want to laugh about. It's not like the back of a joke. Um, it's always within a very specific context and exactly in order to, to, um, to uh, uh, find some kind of outlet for exactly the thing that you described now. This like, it is very much present in our lives. This is something that is, it happened in the past, but it is very much present every day. If it's in a joke, if it's in a reaction, if it's, it's not, it's not history. It's still very much alive. And um, yeah. Yeah, in, yeah, Christine, I was going to say, what would you add to that, please? Yeah, I would add that also approaching it um, with a um, respectful but no fear attitude. So um, financing this film out of Germany is sometimes 
Um, we're not known for our humor, I guess, are we? And um, and not being afraid of of um, of humor that that goes so deep and so dark um, was something that challenged some of our partners, but they were fearless enough to 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 go with Shirel and the vision in the writing. And also, I think it was so um, the the script was so compelling and and and. It was just a wave that washed away the, the, the fears and concerns um, and that there is a, um, a sensitive hand that's leading through this process. And, and that was Shida, yeah. You know, when um, Liam suggests, or it, it's not verbal, but they show up at Yad Vashem, my vo I just, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, oh, they did not go there. And yes, they did. And I was so proud, honestly, that you weren't um, kind of tiptoeing around an issue, right? When I read what the film was going to be about, a German and an Israeli, I thought, oh, they're either going to have to hit it head on or walk, like most movies do, around the issue. So, you know, I loved that it was Germany and not Poland. I love that it was a, a country where the academic, you know, where the education system acknowledges the role that the history had and that the country had in that, and that you guys were fearless, both in script and in everything else, to really approach it head on. Um, one of my favorite parts of the film, and I'd love to hear how you guys decided to juxtapose these, is the grandmother's relationship with an Arab and then the two women being German and Israeli. You know, I don't know that that would have been a natural jump for everyone. So how did that come to be? Um, many things came together. I think that trying to, um, again, face a topic that we usually tiptoe around, I had the feeling that it's either 100% or not at all. So this is loaded with every possible, uh, 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 you know, every, every bomb explodes. That's what we're trying to do, basically, in order to create this kind of feeling of screwball, of allowing ourselves also to, to laugh about these things. And um, part of that was also, uh, um, that's how the story started for me. Being a lesbian, having a, a German wife, um, in my private life, many situations came together and partially it was also the story about the grandmother and her, um, and her story and her boy boyfriend that made me write this uh, in the first place. Um, because um, I, I never know how to tell this story, but my grandmother married a, a, um, a Catholic man that was a big deal, of course. Um, and um, at one point when I came out, she kept on telling me, no matter what, just marry Jewish. And then after she died and the, the, my grandfather, they were divorced and um, my grandmother in the end died alone. But only after she died, I, re I, I learned the story about her true love, which was an Arab man in Israel already. And when all these parts came together, um, I thought to myself, man, that's crazy. You know, we keep on making the same mistakes. Why, why couldn't she just be with the man she loved? Um, and I had to face my own challenges with, with my personal story. Um, yeah, and I felt that these two, two issues are very much connected to each other. Awesome, thank you. Christine, do you wanna add anything to that? It's, it's, it's reality, it's condensed reality, I think. Um, uh, for many people who participated and collaborated on this project, um, for instance, also the Yad Vashem, uh, the Yad Vashem um, storyline, um, when, when Shirel sent me the script and I, and I read it, it actually happened to me with my ex-father-in-law uh, who was a survivor. He asked me to go uh, with him to Yad Vashem and, and, um, uh, and it, it was one of the most heartbreaking but also heart opening experiences. And, and I think also comedy in, in the best sense can go to the places that hurt and, and bring open the heart with with laughter and, and screwball is just such a wonderful format for it. So, yeah. 
Uh, I think that you guys found a way to um, make us very raw, make the viewer very raw and vulnerable, but comforted at the same time. I mean, it was really <clears throat> an experience. It was an emotional experience to watch it. And I think that, Chanel, what you were talking about, you know, that it's universal. Love is love. And it's it's when we put up a veil in between love that we get so messed up, right? That we aren't living our authentic selves. So I wanted to ask both of you um, just to take a second and think about, you know, how has been, how is creating this film kind of removed a veil for you? You know, Purim is coming up and we have this idea that we're all masked, right? And, and part of working through film, I'm sure in front of or behind the camera, there is a shield there. Right. So what has this kind of unveiled for you, this process? I'm going to start with Christine first, if you don't mind. What, ha what has it unveiled? Um, it's a it's a complicated question because also shooting in Israel and producing with so many um, different cultures was not new to me. So that was not the big reveal. Um, the, the rawness of the process, the, it unveiled the, the beauty of personal encounters. What I would say is now another big revelation in, in, in the times of, of, of COVID that coming together um, on the ground in person to bring something in existence is, is just the most beautiful thing. And even if there are um, uh, cultural differences and also obstacles um, that are not we can't overcome in the end. They, they, can, they can stay standing. We don't have to, we don't have to overcome anything just to be civil and productive and collaborative and loving with each other. We can, we can stand on, on, on different or see things from different perspectives. And that was maybe, even if it's not the, the big um, unveiling, then it was an underlining of, of a hunch we all had that coming together in this way was truly beautiful. It's human, right? Yeah. There, were, there was no pretense. <clears throat> In the end, it was just human and, and that message was received. Yeah, Shirelle. What you said actually now, it's like, yeah. the, it's human, yeah? That's, that, that's what I learned. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a, the base of it, I think, yeah. So, you know, I wonder, and I want to know when you guys were um, creating this and I guess researching and how to make the film, what was your target audience? I mean, there were so many times where I said, oh, that's the target. Oh, that must be the target. But really, I mean, there were so many targets in my opinion, but what was your aim? Who did you want this to reach out to? If I may, like, personally, I I was making it for myself, and I and I was making it for Christina also because um, I think in in many ways I feel like I'm not being addressed as <laughs> as a target audience, and I'm sure you can relate to that too. Um, yeah, and I wanted to put something on the screen that I wanted to watch. I was I was just making it for for myself and for you know for the tribe that made it with me or that, that led it like Christina, because um, this is not something that, that you, you need to find the right producer that would let you do that. And I really was privileged to, 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 to have had this kind of opportunity to just like go for it and had someone that understood exactly what I was going for and that wanted that as well. Because I'm sure that if we would have thought of it from the other direction of how, how to sell it, mm -hmm. um, many things would look very, very, Right. Hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, right. Right back at you. <laughs> we no. We we really wanted to. I mean, queer queer women um, uh, are not that, and we both are very openly are not that represented uh, in a let's say non pathological way or non objectified way. And uh, we had the feeling that we want to have our rom com too. We want to have we want to have fun. We want to have culture clash. We have all the same problems. We fight about socks under the sofa, and 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 toothpaste and and cultural differences in our relationship and family and I mean whatnot. Every every couple fights. I think pretty much universal things. And and we wanted to have that representation. That that was the drive to to bring this into into the world. And also we, we simply wanted to make something 
um, uh, yeah, for for a also with four languages in 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 the film, we wanted to make it for all those parties involved because that's also um, uh, um, yeah the makeup of this beautiful Middle Eastern balagan, and and we wanted to make it for all those parties to be represented. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> you succeeded because the interplay, and and I was speaking to Christine earlier, you know. I said, with all this, you know, in the United States, at least right now, people are saying there's movement to say like t-shirts, <clears throat> I look like the vice president and stuff like that. You know, to, as a queer woman to see myself on the screen was was huge, right? And not in an apologetic way, not in a, um, a character on the side. This was the main story, but it was also fun. Like, I can't wait to get this movie and sit with my friends and say, oh my God, you had an ex like that. Or I can't believe she said that. You know, it's, there's so much more I want to have interplay with to point out how that is so livable and so real. So Sherelle, thank you for putting your life on the screen because in many ways it is universal, just as the message of love is love is universal. But there's also this interplay between grandma and granddaughter, between siblings, between, um, you know, heteronormative couples. I mean, there is so many levels of intertextualization going on that I, I can't imagine someone watching this movie a second time and seeing the exact same thing that they saw the first time. So I want to talk about one role um, that we haven't touched much on, which is the role of Israel. And from the very first shot, when it said Jewish princess behind uh, in the very first scene, I said, oh, how cool. That's how they're introducing who the characters are. I didn't put it together. That was the name of the bar. You know, I was like, what a different way to look at it. <laughs> and then the alarm kept going off and, you know, so many different things. My senses were peeped all over the place, right? Visually and sound wise with the Khatuna, with a band that kept playing in a different style. But then I started reading the um, graffiti in the background and there were places where it said, one said one love right outside of their apartment said one love. And I started realizing, oh, you know what? They're using Israel as a character. And I loved the interplay. And I want to know, you know, when you were making this film, how did you add Israel in as a character? Well, the most important thing for me was not to show anything that we've already seen a gazillion times. And, and, and Israel is shown in a very specific context. So I wanted to, to show something that I know in a, from, a, from a different perspective um, from our everyday life, which is very colorful and unorganized and, uh, um, and loud. Yeah. It was a so balagan. That's, that's what a we did, balagan. exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I wanted it to be loud and, and it, it's always a bit too much Israel. And that's what I was going for. This like a bit before it starts to, to be very annoying, but like just full of like chaotic, beautiful uh, um, everyday life. That's what I yeah. was going for and showing you things that put it in context. So yes, you, you, we went to Jerusalem and we went to uh, uh, Yad Vashem and we went to all the places that, that you know, but I kept on trying to think, but how can I show it a bit different? Just a, a tiny change of perspective. Yeah. yeah, everything with a tiny change of perspective, relationships with that tiny change of perspective and the city. And, you know, I love that um, fashion played its own role in this also. That grandma was hip, right? I don't know if she's the same as what your scepter was, but it was like, yeah, this is well, not... Um, <laughs> The grandmother, I actually never talked about it before. No one, no one mentioned it before you uh, just did. Now, um, she was wearing mesquite. And mesquite is from uh, Ruth Dayan, uh, who was the first Israeli woman to start a, a fashion line that was supposed mm. to be like a, um, Israeli fashion. Wow. She just died last week. Wow. Yeah. What a Amazing things that were very hard to get, but that fit just like this, like this, like canine queen, you know. She did feel like a queen when it, when she when she they put up. Yes, it was like that is the Jewish yeah. mama, right? But in every messy, beautiful way, there can be one. So, Christine, do you remember any anecdotes, any funny things that happened while you were were creating this gem? Oh well, I mean, talking about Israel and how it is featured so so um, prominently. Um, actually, 
we also had to turn the buck into a feature because it's so hard to keep Israel out when you, when you shoot in Israel. So, or, I mean, we shot in, in, in Tel Aviv and um, we were, we had this bar we found uh, for, for the Jewish princess bar. And um, we were assured that it's going to be like a soundproof, totally producible location. And it all, on the location scout, it, it, it was quiet and nice. And <laughs> we were all nodding at each other and, and green lighting it. But then it turned out that there was like a, a kindergarten next door, like a, not an illegal one with an like kindergarten no one knew of and also no one could have anticipated but that was still very much existent when we started to shoot so um uh yeah that that was just one of the many 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 things that kept us on our toes and and uh turned yeah turned <laughs> the body into a feature <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you were there, Israeli, so. that there's the secret gun going on next door to the bar, you know, that speaks to the noise that you're talking about, that it's just there. She yeah. ran, what were you going to add? No, that there were like, I think around about 60 refugee children in this illegal kindergarten. And at one point, I don't know if you were there, Christina, I just started shouting, Can someone go and buy them popsicles. <laughs> and then <laughs> the first AD came, just like, Shirel, they're infants. <laughs> Just like put something in their mouth, <laughs> buy them popsicles. <laughs> so yeah. there were so many times in this film where it was full of laughter, and then the next second it was very poignant. And I find that um, Judaism does that for us, right? We uh, Judaism and how Israel is. You know, we have Yom HaShoah and Yom Ha'atzmaut. You know, we have simchas and we have sadness, and everything is bookending the other. Yeah. So why I want you to to really think why was this film so important to make? Why um, besides, you know, you shared, Shirel, it's your story, but why has that become universal? Why is that, why is that something I need to see as an American Jew? Why is someone who is German watching it? Why is someone not Jewish? What's important? What do you want us to see as important? I think for me, the most important part was, uh, and maybe as a Roman American, you can also relate to it, that this kind of, I wanted to show how conflict and love meet each other because we don't necessarily have to agree with the people we love. Mm -hmm. We don't choose a family. We don't choose the religion we're born into. Uh, the context of our lives is something that we rarely get to choose. Um, and it was very important for me to find, a, to find the love in that, basically. And again, I think that's, that's the, the, the universal issue. It's like, we don't choose, but there is, if, if, if you look carefully, you find the way to, to, to put the humanity at the front, regardless of the conflict. And we're not, we're, not, we're not solving anything. That was very important for us as well. It's like, I, I don't have an answer, but, um, but I definitely want to look the problems in the eye and see them. Christine? Yeah. Um coming together in a highly polarized time and finding the common ground in those polarized times. I think uh, for me personally, this is why the script spoke to me. Um, not the only reason, but one of the reasons that I had the feeling that, um, yeah, conflict conflict is okay as, soon, as long as it is um, civilized conflict, more, more or less civilized and, um, and that uh, we can still love each other and come together and find a way, find a way forward, despite um, uh, a cruel past and and despite current problems and and different stances on things, there are ways to go forward together. And I, I personally believe in it, and I think it's worth to put it out in the world in an entertaining way. Awesome! It definitely um, was a real film it was a film about love it was a jewish film it was a german film it was you know a film addressing the shoah it was a film addressing arab israeli conflict i mean it, there was i found i found myself embarrassed to be american sometimes with the dad and other times just feeling you know naive and and loving being an outsider looking in but so many times you also showed us how we are all the insider looking out and how exactly like you said Sherelle, it is not wrapped up in the end i mean that final scene 
came out of nowhere to me, right? And it was like, yes, Yala Belagan, like the whole, everything's a mess and it's wonderful and it's Israel and it's love and it's conflict and it's family. And so I want to, um, to thank the writer director, Shirel Peleg, and I want to thank our producer, Christine Gunter. And I want to thank all of you at the Miami Jewish Film Festival for joining us. And once again, thank you to all of the members and sponsors, community partners, volunteers. And if you are like me, all of the film lovers for, um, and especially CAGE, our central, our Center for Advancement of Jewish Education and the Jewish Miami Federation. And I want to thank the audience because I think that it is through us that we can all go out there and live what this film is showing, that we very much can have a life full of love and conflict and challenge and struggle and um, beauty. So thank you both for being here today. And uh, I wish we had a blockbuster that I could go rent this at, but let us know when we can get this and uh, have girls nights in and uh, watch these with our friends. So thank you guys. Take thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.